Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again, as always. Thank you. Hi. How are you doing? Um, so far, so good. You know, last time I checked, I had a pulse, so I think everything's all right during COVID. That's it. Okay. So good. And you? Yeah, yeah, I'm really great. Cheers, buddy. Um, so, if it, guys, basically, if you have any questions, fire them in. Um, we are here to chat. Sorry, I, it's my, completely my fault why we're late today. I was putting my kids to sleep. Apologies. Uh, but yeah. Little rogue ones. Little rogue ones. Yeah, they were, they were a bit mm, lively. So, mm, it took a little bit right. All right. Hello, yeah. hello. Hello, Gole. Hello, Kurdistan. Hello, everyone. Do you want to introduce yourself, even though you don't really need it? But... Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. I, I was just, you know, waiting for you. Yeah, uh, so my name is Richard, and I'm from Hungary, Budapest, the capital city of uh, Hungary. And I'm a teacher of English. I've been, a, I've been teaching English and learning English for about... I've been learning English for about... 32 years now and I've been a teacher for about 20, 22, 21, 22 years now, I think. Yeah, most basically that's it. Any other questions? Happy to answer. Yeah, fire questions in, guys. That's what we're here for today. If you've got any questions, just chuck them in. Casablanca. That's a good one. Chuck them in. Chuck them in. That's a really good one. Chuck, chuck, and in. Chuck them in. Chuck them in. Chuck them in. It's a fantastic phrase over Chuck them in. Yeah, it's the one I probably use the most, actually, I think. Really? Yeah. Good. So chuck them, chuck them in, just put them into the uh, chat box. Basically, that's what it means. Question and answer are the best methods in practicing in English. Yes or no? Are we talking multiple choice or are we talking about what here? Question, just giving a question and answer session. Uh, depends. Just question and answer with no feedback is not really. Um, it, but it's better than, it's, it's very, very useful. It's good for that practice of reaction. Reaction is really key. So I think it's actually very good. But the ultimate is getting feedback as well at the same time. Yep. Yep. That's it. That's it. Uh, I would say it improves you, improves your uh, improvisational skills as well, because when you use a language, you have to improvise a lot, because there are no set rules for a conversation. That's what I think. Yeah, exactly. That's true. That's very, very true. 100%. Uh, no set rules, and we, we just go. And we, I, I learned something very interesting this week, actually. Um, which I've never, I never really thought about comparing languages that much. But okay. I, I do a live session on, on Clubhouse every weekday. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the other teachers, hi Tabaki. Um, Hello Tabaki. One of the teachers I'm talking with, he's um, from Japan but he lives in America and he's lived there for quite a long time okay. and what he said is in Japanese people tend to pause before they speak to collect their mm -hmm. thoughts before creating mm -hmm. the answer well they're mm -hmm. a bit more they're a bit more um, I don't know how to put it but into nice English but worried worried, Not to... worried. No, no, no 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 like that not like as in that when they use Japanese so it's just part mm -hmm. of their their language they don't really necessarily just run straight in guns are blazing mm -hmm. whereas in english we kind of speak and think at the same time so you you're kind of like trying to imply that japanese people are more composed in some kind of ways uh collective Com collective collected. collected okay collected that's the word i want yeah. collected collected Hi, Hannah. yeah gather their thoughts before Responding or answering or whatsoever. Mm, yeah, so I wonder if that's like even those small things that happen between the languages is quite a big thing to overcome, really, because you 
learn one way but it doesn't mean that your english is necessarily bad or slow mm -hmm. it's just the way that you're used to preparing yes you know? yes uh in my country i'm not that type of person i'm very impulsive i go with the flow and and you know improv uh, spontaneous improvisative but i can imagine that there are some people who in their own language as well have to have to gather their thoughts and ideas notions emotions and feelings and whatsoever before responding or answering i can understand that perfectly mm. yeah sure gotcha hmm. any questions guys find them in someone's doing ielts soon i have to talk about this speaking fluently someone said what barriers are there when you speak oh wouldn't it charles says what should we do talking to someone and fee trial can you feel fill in the gap there you haven't finished the sentence if you can make it everything on that then we can do a good answer for that one um so what barriers are there for speaking fluently do you think first of all overthinking maybe things overthinking things i mean if and because you know i'm a non-native speaker and I went through this kind of process. I, I used to tend to overthink grammar, most basically. What should I use? Which tense? How should I use it? Is it, is it a rule? It is, is it something I have to obey to? Is it, is it something? Is it some, and, and I realized that I didn't communicate at all. I was just thinking to myself and not outwards, if you know what I mean. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I mean, mm, I, th I think that many people go through those barriers of trying to plan out exactly what they're going to say. But like we just said, in, English is quite impulsive. We speak and think at the same time. So actually, we use a lot of filler language in English, I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh, like yes. Re repeating the question. Yes. Um, and kind of half, making half um, half a sentence before finishing it. In yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. often change yeah. sentence, mid-sentence. So. Yes, definitely. That's true. And for example, there's a feedback question which is actually not a feedback question just a filler tsunami tsunami and you know i used to tend to try to answer the question tsunami and yeah yeah, yeah i know what you mean okay it, was, it wasn't the question at all it was just a filler because i was thinking as well what to say then or you know the next time or whatsoever or continuing so there are a lot of fillers, like, for example, like, it's like, uh, you know, we're talking about like, or jamami, or uh, whatsoever, something like that. There's a lot of fillers, in my opinion, and, and that's why I think English is a really, really, as you said it, as you dubbed it, it's a uh, very impulsive language. And there's a lot of things which you should ignore when for example a native speaker like you talks to someone else who's not a native speaker and you know the complexity of the language is that you from a non-native perspective you have to understand what to react to and what not to react to and what just omit and just leave leave it go what so let it go let it go okay great yeah no i agree with you okay how can we improve accent rich you probably you know more about this than me as you've done the process do you mm -hmm. well on you just answer and then i'll go into something in a minute yeah there you go far away what do you think to improve accent to improve, to improve accent Improve accent, um, shadowing, imitating, mimicking, impersonating. That's what I always do. 
um, like 24 seven. I'm actually imitating you as well sometimes. Mm. Out of respect, of course. Mm. Or mockery, any of those are good to be honest with you. <laughs> Okay, but mockery, mockery can be very derogative, couldn't, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it can be. It depends how you take it, I suppose. Yes, yes, yes. So I never, when I, for example, I've got a party trick because I can, I think I can imitate some accents, and I always just do it as a party trick. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to. Um, attack anyone, I don't want to mock anyone, I don't want to berate anyone and when I'm in a good company or what's so just a party trick and they want me to do it I sometimes do it as well Sure, okay uh, Teacher Evan's got a great question Hi buddy, I hope you're well He said, "What? what's up guys? Do you guys do an American accent when you sing a song? Because most of the British singers do it. Uh, I used to. I used to actually. I used to do American accents. When uh, before traveling to and uh, moving to England, I had an American accent. Okay. So is that through singing? Uh, singing, yes. And you know, you know, I love hip hop and rap music. And when I quote mm. rap lyrics, I use the American accent. Because it's you must America. Be, because with a Yorkshire accent, it must sound terrible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. But it's not a Yorkshire accent, you know. It. It's a amalgamation of, yeah. I suppose RP and some hints of North, and that's it. Most basic. I can't even imagine. I can't even do, even f fathom how to mm. rap with a Yorkshire accent or <laughs> accent to That's a really, really good phrase. Fathom. Unfathomable. Mm. I just learned it about a week ago. Unfathomable. That's a good one, I think. Unfath unfathomable. Unfathomable. There you go. Unfathomable. How would you, how would you um, explain, break this word that unfathomable to fathom something is to isn't it to understand mm -hmm. yeah so unfathomable. what's that incomprehend in com yeah, comprehend yeah and basically unfathomable and i guess basically incomprehensible are basically the same thing or similar very very similar very similar very it's similar neurons, so yeah. i would hate to say that they're exactly the same there's rarely a word no, no. That yeah, exactly. And I've got groups like C1 and uh, B2, C1 level, you know, and they, we have, you know, these multiple choice uh, tasks, exercises whatsoever. And, oh, that means the same. No, 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 no. Economy. For example, I had a um, experience that was the word convince and persuade. And as I can remember, persuade was the correct one there and my students said no oh, it means the same in hungarian and i said yeah in hungarian it's the same but in english they are not the same okay well, there you go that's interesting and and basically fathom and fathom and um and comprehend they're just from different origins pretty much is that's when those ones those pairs kind of come together they usually are from two different origins one's Fathom is the old English version, and then, well, from Germanic, but it went into old English, and then um, comprehend is obviously Latin based. Latin. So yes, Latin. Modern. Yeah, you know, because of the th sound, maybe it's a Norse origin yeah, 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 to yeah. it. Fathom, like Thor, Thursday. Mm. Um, they had ball. the thorn symbol, didn't they? So. Yeah, that was the futark. It's called the futark, I think. That's the symbol. The Viking runes, the futark is mm -hmm. symbol of the th sound. So maybe that's why it's it's Scandinavian, Norse, Germanic, Proto-Germanic. I'm not sure, but, but that's what I. I... There you go. Well, like, I'm pretty sure mother, mother is a 
a French word. I got a feeling it's a French word. I don't know why I'm thinking that. Let me double check. I'm probably wrong. I think maybe it's Latin. Madre in in Spanish. Madre. Uh, something like oh, this. Maybe, maybe. Um, from, yeah, but if it's from French, then it's from Latin tech field. No, mother is not from French, it's from Old English. That's interesting. There's some, oh, are like, yeah. or maybe it's extended family. Extended family okay. is from French, like cousin, aunt, uncle. Mm -hmm. Maybe close relatives will be from Germanic because. Cousin, cousin's definitely from French. Mm, because they wouldn't have added those words until later on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I've kind of gone off track here. Um, is there any difference yeah. between teacher, coach, or instructor? Yeah, there is. <laughs> Do you want to... and, tu and tutor as well. Tutor. tutor. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tackle it? No, oh, I, I wouldn't. Because uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit thorn between these things. Like, what's a tutor? What's a teacher? What's a trainer? What's... I, I, I think a teacher or a person who educates is all at the same time, kind of, in my I opinion. Think... Teachers are more like they go for this method, method in mm -hmm. this order. Instructor is like they just tell you what to do. Instructor is definitely they just tell you what to do because it's instruct. Coach mm -hmm. is more like they deal with situations and adapt. That, is, that has always been my understanding from when I was a football coach. Mm -hmm. really the big difference between it is like a coach is assessing and adapting at the same time, whereas a teacher kind of, Traditionally, a teacher does it in an order, orderly fashion. Mm -hmm. when they, mm -hmm. when they, orderly uh, fashion. Them. Orderly fashion. I love it. I love this one. Orderly fashion. Spinning, spinning around the uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in two minds because I don't like to call myself a teacher. I, don't and I, a teacher. I never looked at myself if I were a teacher or something. Uh, I'm kind of dubbed myself closer to, to a tutor, maybe, but I'm not. I wouldn't put it that way either, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I think I'm not a big fan of the word teacher personally because I think it gives mm -hmm. people negative connotations in their heads. Yes. Yes. They, they're yeah. reminded of a bad time when they're a kid or a good time, but I don't mm -hmm. think you can relate. Yeah. The problem with teacher, the word like teacher is like a very stereotypical word that could be uh, relate to many people. And then you conjure the same image, but we're all very mm -hmm. different. So that's maybe that's like a, the new style of thinking, I suppose. Like we do that with everything. We don't like to be put into a box of people. I don't know. But yeah, we like to break them all. That's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. I just think like my teachers at school, they're just playing from a book. I'm not like that at all. I don't do. I do completely opposite. So me neither. Me neither. I'm not that at all. Uh, I always say, yeah, okay. If you want an exam, play by the rules, learn the rules, obey to the rules, obey the rules. But you know, real life, real communicate, real life communication is something totally different. It's like yeah. chalk and cheese. It's like chalk and cheese. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Okay, here's, this has come into the thingy as well. How can you improve intuition? Oh. I think it's intangible. I think we're it, really it, probably talking about how can we improve um, reacting to English instinctively without having to think too much. I think it would be a better way to put it, I guess. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I would say it's really really intangible isn't it i mean intuition mm. uh, how can you, it's beyond physical limitations or whatsoever i would say and, and maybe holistically but i'm not sure about it if 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 you know what i mean by holistically yeah gotcha but i think that um Intuition is always improved through experience. Yeah, because it's a reaction. that's definitely. And we always, we, if you think of, I always refer to football, unfortunately, but if you think about Lionel Messi, most of the time he does stuff instinctively. Yeah. Um, and I think that's because he's been in the situation enough times to be like, this is probably going to happen. Mm -hmm. So 
I think it's the same with language. The reason why yes. we instinctively say my name is Stu is because we answer that question all the time. Mm -hmm. Whereas, yeah. well, how, and, how's the weather? Uh, it's a lovely day. Yeah, sure. It's great. You know. It's an in interesting idea because where does it come from? Where, where's the root of instinct? Maybe practice, continuity. Maybe instinct, if you know what I mean. Yeah, cool. I mean, it starts from being spontaneous, doesn't it? And trial and error. So trial and error really is so is the original, original base. But you, your instinct is it's based on what you see, I guess. What you see in front of you and what you've seen other people reacting to in the what past. What we hear, yeah, of course. Um, but, you know, you kind of gauge it on how you would have done that. If we're talking about language, I'm sure we yes. do it in terms of how we would respond to it in our own language. And I think that's where confusion comes in from the beginning when we learn a second language because we try to translate. So that's why people don't like to translate. But translation is all part of the process, by the way, guys. It's, you can't you can't just be like, I can't translate ever. Yeah, I think the more you times you go through those experiences, the less times you need to translate because you get that yes. pattern and that's where yes. intuition comes in. So if we're talking about response to a person, to respond to someone intuitively, it's just the amount of experience you've had answering those questions, I guess. That would be, or being in that experience. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. Because, because uh, there are some people, not you, for example, because, uh, but let me tell you something. When I first saw your uh, IG live, I, I couldn't understand every single word you were saying or you were telling now I just don't care because because we had how many like five or six lives together and before that we, we talked for minutes or something like this and and now I just don't care because because it's all holistic that's why I said it because because I'm used to your tone your voice your mannerisms or whatsoever and now I can holistically kind of expect what you are going to say mm. how you're going to say it and i don't need to understand every single syllable if i want to understand you i don't know if if you know what where i'm coming from yeah of course i do i mean i think that we've had enough conversations where the, i think we have i think once you understand who you have similar mindsets with intuition intuition happens almost instantly because yes. you um, and that's also where confusion comes in on a day-to-day -day basis because you assume someone's thinking the same as you didn't you and and that's your intuition failing really it doesn't mean intuition is not there it's just trial and error and it's trying to be trying to use it and it's the first reaction you have it's just how to train it to be relatively correct i mean <laughs> it's difficult and it because you can't control the other person it's not like a yeah. test scenario you know yes. it's not like a scientific test first it's not a robot it's mm. not a robot not a terminator not a a steel framed artificially uh how can i put it artificially created some kind of a being it's mm. a person it's an individual uh, it's a a person who has their own speaking style, speech patterns, emotions, notions, thinking, even not just speech patterns, but but their own way of expressing, explaining things. And once you get used to that particular and peculiar style i would say style maybe that's a good word style mm. of of speaking and and behaving or attitude maybe that's where when intuition comes into play mm. yeah I, I think it's automation isn't it? intuition 
kind of, kind of. Automatic, yeah, like that automatic, automatic expectations and res mm -hmm. responses, maybe, and experience. vice versa, maybe. Mm. Uh, Celta Delta, which is the better certificate? I literally don't know anything about either of these, so maybe you know better than me. Ah, uh, no. I ain't got... I ain't got no Celta, I ain't got no Delta. I pretty much, I've, I've seen a lot of people with Celta. It, this would be my answer. Uh, I haven't seen many people with Delta so far. Mm. Delta is a higher level, I think. Okay, exactly. well, there you go. That's maybe why. Maybe that's, and obviously I see a lot of people with Tefl or Tofl. So, uh, mm -hmm. Toek, sorry, Toek. Toek? Yeah. I can't remember now. There's so many abbreviations that are really Tesol, uh, Tefl. Delta, Delta, something like this. And um, Delta is a little bit higher. Okay, fantastic news. Uh, here's an interesting one. When would we be qualified for teaching English? I mean, when would we realise that we're qualified? Um, I've got qualifications, but I think I was a, I'd been a teacher way before that, or tutor way before that. That's my answer. Uh, my answer is, you know when you're qualified to teach English when the student understands what you're saying and you've helped the student. That would be my answer. So That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I mean, look, I know people who are extremely well qualified as English teachers, but they're unable to communicate. So yeah. they use advanced terminology that doesn't work. Yes. And can't communicate to their students. So... They're technically teachers, but I mean, you know, they are teachers 1000%. They have a great knowledge of the language, but still communication skills are just as important, in my opinion. Um, and it's difficult to say, to be honest. I think, look, trying to be work out when the day you will be able to be a teacher is like trying to say the day I will be fluent in English. You <laughs> have to just do it to get better and better and then become the teacher because I was never a good teacher at the start but then I wasn't a good teacher at the start I should say but then over time various I didn't say I'm not saying I'm a good teacher now but what I'm saying is like I've improved over time and I feel very confident in my ability now compared to at the start so it's just process of trial and error same as when you learn to speak oh I was literally um, shivering, like like I was cold or something when I when I started to teach, uh, when I started my first group lesson, I can re I vividly remember. I was like, oh my, what what's going to happen? What? But I just went with the flow and and yeah, perfected it. It's not perfect, never be perfect, but I've been perfecting it for more than twenty years now. Okay, there we go. Um, so, as we know, practice makes perfect. These two questions are the same, so I put them both. Um, which practice should I use for instance, talking to someone daily? Uh, daily English is good. Is it good for intermediate? Um, uh, it's like, let, let, let me um, tackle this one here. Um, please, far away. If, 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 if it's not a problem. Mm. You know, I, I'm always confused, really. Uh, and I'm telling you why. Because, because as you said it, just do it, like Nike, you know, just do it, and, and there's going to be a time which you will never, never provision or never, you know, kind of predict but there's going to be a time when when something is going to happen which kind of trips you over the edge from a level to another level or even beyond a level if you know what i mean so yeah. Well, I, I, once I had a uh, student who asked me, Richard, please tell me how many words do you need to know for level B? And I said, uh, 
are you really it, it, are you serious with this question how many words do you need come on language is not like a a laptop that for example you need a mouse for your let's say you need a mouse to move the cursor it's not that it doesn't work that way language is language it's a living breathing entity and if i said okay you need let's say 10000 words and you go to the exam ielts whatsoever you sit sit in an exam and there's a let's say reading exercise and the reading exercise is full of words you don't know you're going to blame me because that what that's what that's what my teacher richard said that i need only 10000 words and what are these words here you can't If be you know, so literal with it it can't be so like are you you have to have this and this is the pass mark you know it's more like well you can improve uh every yeah. day and find the words that are most relative to you they will help you become fluent fastest so or at least on the topics you're going to speak about the most and then after that then you can start to extend out to other topics and then start building yes. around that you know i think i was saying it in my in my clubhouse session actually recently that the people are fighting too hard to try and get new vocabulary every day rather than actually learning stuff that suits their relative subjects that they're actually going to be speaking about like they're learning about historical terms when they mm -hmm. don't ever speak about history in english they yes. spoke one time with one person who has a fad for history yes, that exactly and it's useful you know so exactly exactly i teach i tutor and i tutor um and a lot of people ask you know questions that for example let's say uh biophysics okay biophysics richard do you know this word in connection with biophysics and yeah because i'm a biophysicist no so actually i don't know this word because i've never used it i've never seen it i've never heard it because this is not my field mm -hmm. but Uh, would a biophysicist know about let's say consonant changes or the great vowel shift in english i bet a biophysicist wouldn't know about it at all yeah, exactly. bugger all it's not it's not their field so it's not my field it's not their field and i suppose in your own language just ask yourself the question look in the mirror ask yourself the question Could you speak about biophysics in your own language?